Star Stable is an MMO about owning a horse and going on adventures with them in the beautiful island and areas of Jorvik. Recently, Star Stable released their newest horse, which they dubbed the Jorvik Wild Horse. They boasted in ads and comments, which one will you bond with? Suggesting that instead of just buying the horse, we might have to first earn its trust. They further explained how wild the horses were and how rare it was for them to approach humans. It was going to be, at least according to the ads, something truly unique. The buzz around this horse was astounding. Players were wondering and debating on how the horse would play, if you would have to catch them, if you would struggle to place a saddle on it. The hype was growing faster and faster, and when the horse finally landed, the servers were full enough to make some games crash. Allegedly. And how would you go about finding this prestigious wild horse of Yorwick? Where would you begin your search? You went ahead and bought one, of course. I believe that this horse and this entire situation encompasses everything that is wrong with Star Stable. The focus of Star Stable Online has shifted from giving a good game to rather ensuring you just spend money every month. I don't mind them making money, but plucking at heartstrings to do so was rather messed up. They created a pretty, cute horse that everyone would want, emotionally manipulating players. In the ads, they seemingly promised a good bond mechanism, and they copped out and just dropped it in the world for you to go and buy. Remember that long ago time when we could call Star Stable a bit of a magical experience? Yeah, it's long gone. SSO is doing the least amount of effort painting their half arts product in pretty colors, slapping on nice trailers, and then expecting you to buy it and to buy into it. And that's essentially what they're doing. And you know what? The second you buy it, you realize that it is essentially exactly the same thing as all the other horses, because nothing new is being added or brought into the game. You know, like a decent bonding mechanism? Something that the story of Star Stable is actually about, building a bond with your horse. <sighs> Before continuing though, I would like to make something very clear. I play this game, I've been playing it for years and I do enjoy certain aspects of it. The world, for example, can be beautiful at times, the horse animations can be downright perfect at times, and other times not. And riding around in the fields, forests, or down the mountain is very relaxing and enjoyable. Look at these areas, they're so atmospheric and calming. You know, it's nice to play in here for a bit. So, if you love this game, I am not here to tell you not to. I'm just trying to point out some very big flaws in how SSO is treating its player base and how to show you how other games that aren't even horse games are doing it far better. The areas and atmosphere is spot on. The rest, not so much. So, on the main page of SSO, you can check out the different packages they sell for the game. There are three types of subscriptions, monthly, tri-monthly, and full-time. The star coins you get is a currency you can use to do pretty much everything in the game, plus, of course, buy horses. The only way to get star coins is to buy them with real money. Or, if you get a membership, you get 100 star coins a week, which really isn't much as we'll see going forward. There is another currency called Jorvik Shillings, which is an in-game currency you can get through completing quests and racing your horse. You can use it to pay for transport and to buy certain items. However, take note, the Jorvik Shillings are capped at 10,000, meaning you can't save up continuously and then buy a single outfit. You have to save up, buy a piece, save up, buy a piece, and so on. Because when you look at these prices, it's going to be difficult to buy a full set with just 10,000 Jorvik Shillings. This is a way I believe they prey on impatience and encourage players to rather use star coins and so in turn buy star coins when those new horses come out. But with subscriptions covered, let's get into the actual gameplay of the game and start looking at what the problems are in Star Stable, starting with quests. In SSO, quests are a way for your character to gain experience points and so level up. Every level you gain boosts your stats. This in turn determines how fast your horse can run and how quick it can turn. The horse's level also play a big factor, but I will discuss this in the training section. For now, let's just focus on the character. It determines other stats as well, but those are really the only two that's gonna matter in this game. The quests are very interesting. They include things like pick up towels, Pick up stones, pick up boxes, and pick up brains because you don't need any in Star Stable. To give you an idea of the level of laziness in this game though, they recently released the beach party event and they just kept in an old quest from last year with absolutely no variant. They just slapped it in there. Nothing new, nothing different, just the same thing again. And this laziness is spread throughout the quests. 
repeats and rehashes everywhere, just painted in different colors and with a bit of glitz and glamour, they convince you it's something amazing. Newsflash, it's not. To top it off, they keep adding collectibles, the easiest quest to code in the world. The birthday quest literally has you running around picking up golden horseshoes and there are a ton of these little collectible quests littered throughout the game. Just look at these. And the rewards are just cosmetics, as a new gear or a pretty hat. It's nothing really to write home about. With the amount of collectibles popping up recently, I'm thinking that the person who came up with this brilliant piece of coding most likely has his own cult at the company by now. I'll send them some Kool-Aid. Also, Star Stable, why am I paying for cake on your birthday? It is oh, at a birthday I'm supposed to get free cake. The cake is a lie. In any event, the entire point of leveling is to be able to really take part in the end game. Kind of. The end game is competitions, where the highest level of players compete. The problem is, a lot of quests have either been removed or are hidden behind timed events which come up once a year, meaning you most likely can't reach the higher level of 23-24 and you'll be stuck at level 20 at this point. So trying to compete against them, you're going to be plumb out of luck. Gear do add bonuses to your stats, making you faster and quicker, so adding gear isn't a bad idea. Also, just don't think like anything crazy, like completing a golden collection will give you some sort of bonus. No, 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 darling, that's witch thinking, that is. Theoretically, you could, with good gear and careful riding, maneuver fast enough to gain on the higher levels and possibly place. But that's going to be taking some good riding. They do have groupings where they do try to kind of shove all the levels together but it, it doesn't really work well and you're going to find yourself often competing against people who are way above your level. Why would you go through all this effort, taking part in this competition, getting the right gear and, and training your horse up? You will get a ribbon you can sell for your Vic shillings, the in-game currency you already get when you're training your horses. Just, a, just, just kudos for that amazing reward, this is so just stellar. Okay, after that fiasco, let's move on to dailies. They're exactly the same as quests, you just do them every day, moving on. You know what, no, no, these things are freaking atrocious and I really need to talk about them. They're exactly the same in construction. You pick up stuff, you deliver stuff, you bake cake, you fish. The only difference is they give you reputation points and not XP. But oh, no wait, technically they do. Because you see, XP is sometimes hidden behind reputation leveling, meaning you will have to play certain dailies, and I'm not kidding, up to 60 to 100 times to max out reputation and get 15 XP that you so desperately need to reach the next level. This is what we like to call in the gaming world throttling, and it is a lazy way to ensure we stay busy. But if you thought the quests were boring, wait until you get a load of this. With dailies, you can do such amazing tasks such as sweep the stables, water the horses, feed the horses. You can pick up milk bottles, pick up fallen rocks, pick up fallen trash, pick up fallen brains because you don't need it in Star Stable Online and feed the cows and other menial tasks that no one cares about. Crunching reputation has become a bit of a joke in this game, so much so that no horse I think that has come out recently you actually have to crunch reputation to get. The reason for that is because they sometimes give you so little reputation for each daily, it's almost comical. The best part is while I was scanning through the old news of Star Stable Online, came across an article where they said the fishing quests actually gave even less reputation than they do right now. They actually made it five times more. Just a nice way to throttle the players. Just well done. Thank you, Star Stable, for boosting that one up. Can you now do it with the rest? I would also be remiss, though, if I didn't at least mention Pharaoh's Workshop. Another daily, but where you actually craft items with flowers you've picked and collected, and then the items you delivered to houses. I quite like the idea behind it. It's something more to do than just race or collect. It still does sort of encompass what all the other quests are doing. Pick up stuff, click a button, deliver it. But I will say this is actually something interesting they added. They can do more with it, but yeah, this is quite something nice. Well done, Star Stable. Have a Jorvik shilling. You've earned it. All right, on to main quests. They're exactly the same as side quests. They just tell a story. Okay, fine. It has actually a nice story and some of the quests are pretty well done and interesting. I will actually grant them that. I do kind of like the emotional story with the four star riders and when you really get into the story it's really interesting and it's magical and you have some nice villains and there's some family problems and emotional issues so the story itself I don't think is bad and some of the quests in the story are actually kind of decent. But if you think they're going to put in a lot of effort, think again. 
Here's the last quest I did in the main storyline. Go pick some flowers. Thank you, Star Stable, for this reskinned and rehashed content. You are so bloody generous. Now, main quests, I have something even more egregious. Roadblocks! The quests will essentially stop dead, and you can only continue on the following day. Not as an in in-game day, as in in real life you have to go to bed day. You can sleep over in-game, but it will cost you 75 star coins. And seeing as you only get 100 star coins per week, you're not going to be wanting to spend it on that. Oh no, oh no, you're going to be wanting to spend it on, you know, the horses? Now this is only done to extend player game time. So you can't exactly grind for a whole day for fun. The game won't allow that. Otherwise you won't stay long enough to see all the new horses they bring out, yeah? To make it just that bit more underhanded, if you bought a month or a three month subscription, you won't be able to finish the main quest line unless you buy more star coins to sleep over every night, meaning you have to spend more money. Just another incentive to buy a full time membership. So quests are overall just reskins, rehashes of old quests being thrown at us over and over to keep us busy. There really isn't a big point in doing the quests except for leveling and when you do eventually level to a certain point, the quests dry up and then you're at the mercy of the designers to bring in new quests and they are very slow in doing this. When you look at the new section, you will notice that quests are very far and few between and you will notice what they're focusing on is horses, horses, horses. But actually there is one part I have not talked about, something I would be remiss not to mention. The Rune Rider. Apart from the other endgame, this might also be considered another sort of endgame for the game. Essentially, you need to build up reputation to get the prestigious Rune Runner by doing soul riding. I will say the quests for the Rune Runner are a little better than the other dailies. There are some collectible quests, precision riding, and you have to race to your destination in a time limit. Which does go very easy on the players, but it's a nice addition to give you a chance to learn the area of Jovik a little better, and not just fast travel the whole time. You get an average of about 1400 experience points per day for doing all the dailies, and as you progress you will also get some gear, of course more cosmetics, and some interesting lore. But how much reputation points do you need to get the Rune Runner? 120,000. It will take you at least 85 days to get this horse. This means if you grind every day and you have a month subscription, you will not be able to get this horse. If you have a three month subscription, you will get it, but just barely. This means the Rune Runner. It's a trap! It is a way to ensure players will become emotionally invested. They've put so much effort in that they would rather buy a full time membership and keep their horse. To top it off, the Rune Runner is just a reskin of another horse, the North Swedish horse. You heard that right. The ultimate unique horse that you can get in this game that you have to grind at least 85 days for is literally just a reskin of a horse you most likely already own. What is the motivation to get this horse again? The Rune Runner is the culmination of all their brilliance put into one horrible package. One, dailies to keep you busy. Two, repetitive quests they don't need to update. And three, you get another reskin of a horse you already have, so no extra work. Slap a trailer on there and we're good to go. The Rune Runner, I will say, is at least a status symbol amongst players. The mount shows for all to see that they have finished the soul riding training and that they've put a lot of effort into this game. But the thing is, right, just there was a horse like this? They were called the Fjords. For the longest time, the Fjords were everyone's favorite in Star Stable Online. Not because they were pretty or cute, but because they symbolized something important. Dedication to the game. Much like the Rune Rider, one needed to build up the reputation with the Kultur clan, Kultur, I'm gonna go with Kultur, who live in the snowy hidden valley in order to be able to purchase one of these six different colored horses. Six. You had to be at least popular with them, be level 15, and then when you purchased a fjord, it was tacked up and leveled up to 10. This is a status symbol, a reward for hard work. I remember when I was a new player, the awe I had for those who had a fjord, They'd been in the valley, and the first time I traveled down there on my big old shire, it was a damned magical experience. There was an air of mystery to the valley, something a touch magical, and the fjord only exemplified that. The second I stepped into that valley, I knew I was one step closer to getting a fjord. You could only buy a fjord if you've ever been to the valley. Now, the fjord has been stripped of its status and can now be bought anywhere. 
it is not tacked up and it is not level 10 and you don't need to be even near the culture you don't even need to be in the valley to get one they're just there the rune runner has taken the fjord's place i will hear many cry yeah but jesus it is an elongated horrible grind and it's a reskin of an old model and you can't even pick interesting colors and it's not leveled and it's just boring and it's just not as mystical as an ancient tribe in the snowy mountains willing to share their beautiful horses with those they trusted i also don't remember the cultist grind being so terrible maybe it was i can't remember though you could say it was fun exploring the valley. The last truly great area I think they released, you can actually get lost in the valley, the only place where that is even remotely possible in SSO. On the topic of areas, let's actually go ahead and discuss areas. As I said before, the areas in Star Stable are quite brilliant and quite beautiful and atmospheric. I like the fact that there is a quite a wide variation, from forests to fields to icy mountains. They are clearly putting in a lot of effort. However, they're not actually putting in the amount of effort that they used to. When I look at the newer areas, I cannot help but mentally compare them to the Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur. I love this area. It's one of my favorite places and I will praise this thing to heaven and back. What I like about the Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur is the mysticism about it. The entire new ecosystem you're essentially seeing and exploring. I love the fact that it is so big, so intricate. There are bridges and caverns and forests and a huge ass dinosaur in the middle. I mean, come on, this is amazing. And you need a specific type of horse to ride there. You're going to either need a fjord or you're going to need a Norwegian horse. And those are the only two horses that can ride in this area, which is absolutely brilliant. They made an interesting game mechanism. If you ride with another horse there, it'll slow down. So this is awesome. But think about it. When was the last time they made an area this interesting? Pandoria is an area they released about two years ago. It is heavily weaved into the main storyline. According to lore, Pandoria is a kind of magic source, a plane of magic if you will. Although it is not exactly evil, it can be used to do evil. If it becomes unstable, our world is in danger. If you stay in there long enough, you will become ill and can even die. So why not make it an open area for everyone to enjoy? The area itself is quite frankly breathtaking when you first walk in there. You can see the amount of effort the designers put in with the fauna and flora. I love these manta rays flying above my head. I love the foliage and trees and mushrooms and music. The place is gorgeous. So, with such a beautiful area, what can you do in Pandoria? You can have a picnic! That's it. After you complete the main storyline in Pandoria, then you've essentially done everything. Now, one can say that this is technically true for a lot of the areas, but at least I can find stuff to collect there, do dailies, race and compete in championships in those areas. Pandoria is this strange blurb of nothing. Oh, and it is buggy as hell. Look at this. I'm bugging out. I'm stuck to the floor. Well, halfway into the floor. This is... Oh, oh, hi, evil thing. Oh, wait, you don't do the damage. Why do I have a health bar again? So Pandoria, I believe, is just another example of doing as little as possible with a hefty focus on the prettiness of a product, but not its value. Because we can't deny Pandoria is beautiful to look at, but like much of this game, it offers nothing else. The last area they released was Mistfall, the National Park. And it is very beautiful, or rather interesting, and it has some, you know, interesting areas and also some bridges. But what can you tell me about Mistfall? You can take some pictures. There are wolves, but there were wolves in other areas in the Golden Hills, remember? In the Golden Lee Valley, there were wolves. So there's nothing really interesting or new being brought to the table in Mistfall, like with the Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur. And I know that the newer area that they're going to be bringing in is going to be a forested area, another forested area. Why aren't they bringing in a desert area and then saying that the Marwari and the Arabian are the only two horses that can ride there, much like it would be with the Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur? They're not doing that because it's actually going to take a lot of effort. And honestly, I'm going to be very honest, and I know not a lot of people are going to be agreeing with me. Mistfall was a very big disappointment for me when I first rode in there. It hasn't really captured me as something like Epona did. It didn't really intrigue me as much as South Hoof Peninsula. There was something magical about these areas. This one just felt so generic. <laughs> it's just a forested area. So the areas aren't being done very well. I think that if they're going to do an area, do it well and do it interesting. Not just a forested area and slap it in there because, I mean, we have seen a million trees by this point. Can we get a desert area? Please. 
Speaking of South Hoof Peninsula, I quite like the area, but when you really think about South Hoof Peninsula, Peninsula, you realize that it is essentially just a flat area with some stones and a little beach area. That is very lazy. So what I at least can say for Mist Fall, they put in some trees and a bridge. Yay. But yeah, I would like to see some better areas, not just forests and mountains. Again, we have enough of the star stable. Please just make a desert area. So seeing as the questing in this game is less than stellar, does the training actually offer anything of worthwhile? No. The goal of training in SSO is to max your horse's level up to 15. The more you train, the more XP your horse gets. Don't you keep in mind. The higher level it is, the faster it will get, and the other starting stats like strength or agility will also improve, improving its jumping and maneuverability respectively, and also of course its speed, giving you incentive to take part in the championships for another ribbon you can sell for your Vic shillings. I am still not over this. And training is what you're going to be doing 90% of the time. So how do you go about training your horse? You race them. That's it. There are some variations like barrel racing, show jumping racing, and pole bending, but it all comes down to the same thing. Get to the next marker within the time limit. And you're going to be doing a lot of these. To give some context, a horse needs 33,000 XP to reach level 15. If the lowest you can get for a race is 100 and the highest is 250, that means the average you can get per race is 175. Dividing that into 33,000 means you'll be riding 135 races before hitting level 15 per horse. There aren't 135 races in this game. There are about 50, meaning you're going to be doing a lot of races over and over again. Now imagine doing that with 10 or more horses. Yay! And the races are painfully repetitive and dull. It's the same thing over and over, just in different areas and with a few jumps. And some of the races are exactly the same, just in reverse. To top it off, they also added checkpoint races, which has no path and just has you racing from one point to another as fast as you can. Standard game design, guys. Just amazing. The latest trick is to add races, only to remove them a week or so later. Better yet, advertise the races as something unique and then just not put in any effort at all. Their last race as of making this video was the H&M Grand Prix. Ever wanted to ride in a Grand Prix? Well, here is your chance. It is the exact same thing as all the other races, only it's actually worse somehow. Basic thing I think for a Grand Prix is that you get penalties when you knock down poles. They've had races before where knocking poles or hitting barrels gives you a penalty. I tested this in this new race and not once did I get any sort of penalty for knocking a pole. If you want to give me a Grand Prix experience, then here's a thought. Give me a Grand Prix experience. I can think of at least three games off the top of my head that does this better. What the hell? Furthermore, Star Stable has not raised the level cap in at least four years, just showing me at least that their focus is really not on the gameplay at all. And speaking of gameplay, let's actually take a look at how stellar it is. The controls are rather clunky and it feels heavy sometimes. When your horse stops, it takes a long time for the animation to kick in and start moving again. Sometimes you'll hit invisible walls and get caught on poles or fences, and the horse will keep running and won't stop. The hitbox is pretty bad. You can't bunny hop, quick start, half pass, drift, quick turn or sprint. Sprinting would actually be ideal in this game, seeing as it is a race game, but nah. Although sometimes I do get this momentary point where a horse will slow down in a turn and then quickly speed up. But it's not a dedicated function. They need to make this a dedicated function. Star Stable, do your job and make this a dedicated function. You can't crash over a jump, you can't speed up at long stretches, and you can't turn your horse to get in those tight little corners. All of this just makes the races stagnant and downright moribund. There are games that are 10 years old that does this way better. There isn't even dressage in this game, so you can't teach your horse dressage moves like Piaf, Passage, or Flying Changes, or Pirouettes. And telling me that these will take time or it's difficult to do won't fly as a lot of the horses that are coming out already have these animations. They are giving these animations to certain horses and not all of them to make them that little bit more tempting to buy. But what interests me the most is some of these quests are actually kind of built for dressage. This precise riding quest is ideal. Just make it a little longer, add in some gate changes and you're good. We have a dressage test. And if you think the gate changes are too difficult or impossible. 
Well, there is a particular race in this game where you have to be able to ride the Icelandic Tolt during certain parts of the race. So they can do gate changes. Why not apply that here and make a basic dressage competition? Because they're too busy making new horses. <sighs> Now, let's compare Star Stable Online Training with two other games, Black Desert Online and Red Dead Redemption. Both of these are not technically horse games, but they have horse game mechanisms. Now, this is not to convince you to buy another horse game, rather to show you an example of how this can be done. Black Desert Online is an open world MMORPG which have all of these horses you can, say it with me, catch in the wild. After you catch them, you mount them and you can ride it. You don't have to buy them with real money. They are available. You can then train them to learn a lot of different skills like drifting, jumping higher, sprinting, sprinting faster, drifting, I like drifting, sideways jump, quick start, quick stop and so on. Also, why doesn't Star Stable have a quick start? I feel like this is really a basic thing for a horse game with racing. Training them is a bit of a drag. The more you ride, the more skills your horse picks up. So it's not exactly dynamic, but at least you can teach your horse new moves. Furthermore, you can breed horses. A function that Star Stable will never be able to add into their game because it will fundamentally break the way that they currently make money, which is rather sad. You have no limit to the amount of horses you can keep. You can hitch them to wagons, change their colors and styles, and buy stunning skins to put on your horses. Look at these skins! I will say though, the skins are pretty expensive. I think about $17 a pop, yeesh, but you don't have to buy them. And also, you can go into battle with them, as in Warhorse style, as in Choppy Choppy Head Goes Off style, as in Awesome style. How much does this game cost? <laughs> so you're all wondering, how much will this game cost? It cannot be less than Star Stable. I mean, this is clearly a big game. A lifetime Star Stable subscription plus 1,200 Star Coins plus a horse will cost you $75. To buy Black Desert Online one time, plus a horse, plus a pet, plus gear, it'll cost you $50. 40 euros, around about $50. Or you can buy it for 9 euros and just start from scratch. Yeah, one time buy, 9 euros, and then you can still get all the horses for free. Yeesh. Now let's look at Red Dead Redemption. Once again, I'm reiterating, I'm not telling you to go buy these games. Instead, I'm comparing to show you how good horse mechanics can be in a game if the designers and publishers Put the effort in. In Red Dead Redemption, you can also capture horses in the wild, but the horses won't actually trust you at first. They will buck you off, or they can even spook easily. And it takes a little time and care of calming them down to get them to, you know, trust you. You know, like bond with you. You can also teach it skills. The more your, and say it with me, bond grows with the horse, the more skills it will have and the faster it will run. Yes, this game has an actual bond mechanic built in. Remember when SSO mentioned this about the new horse? Will you build a bond with it? Here is a game that actually does it and does it well, with gorgeous animations and gorgeous horses. Look at all these horses. Look at all these horses. They're so pretty. You also, I believe, don't have a limit on the amount of you can keep, and there are a ton of different breeds and colors you can choose from. You can pet the horses, lead it, remove your saddle, walk to another horse and put the saddle on, call the horse and it will come to you. You can also feed it and calm it down, and the more you take care of it, the more it will trust you, and so your bond will grow. It's an amazing concept. Actually, let's talk about that real quick. In Star Stable Online, you do have a mood meter which determines how well you're taking care of your horse. If the mood meter is red, you're doing a bad job. If the mood meter is green, you're doing a good job. Yay! So how do you take care of your horse? You, um, well, you can groom it. You can pick its hooves or one hoof, the same hoof every time. Uh, you can give it water and food. And when you do that, it, it goes up a, a level with the mood meter. And then it runs a little faster. Yeah. You can't, for example, give it interesting feet to make it run faster or jump better or boost its, ho its mood meter quicker. Nah, that would be innovative. And besides, they want you rather to pay to have the mood meter boosted for 100 star coins. Well done, Star Stable. Just, just, just well done. You just, you just deserve that award every single time. Although, I will say this, you do have a health bar for some reason. No one knows. I, I don't know why. I don't think anyone knows why, but it's there. You can't get hurt or wounded. Your horse can't fall or crash, really. You can't fall hard enough to impede your game. Why do we have a health bar? 
Does anyone know? Is there any? Is there perhaps some mystery game somewhere I don't know about where I can cast fireballs, and battle the Nokolvi in an epic battle to the death? Is there some disease my horse can pick up? Can my horses die? That would be interesting. Horrible, but interesting. But seriously, why in the name of all that is holy is there a health bar in this game? Someone answer me. Now we get to the main issue, the reason why the whole series was started and why you are all here watching and to be frank, why a lot of you are still playing. Horses. The main function of horses in Star Stable Online is to be ridden. If you watched the entire video, you would realize by now that at most you're going to be racing around in a circle about 135 times to reach a level cap and then wait for the new horse to come out and do the exact same thing. This is the game compounded into the main issue. Horses have become accessories, not, you know, living, breathing animals, like in Red Dead Redemption. And the sad thing is, the prettier they are, the quicker the players will buy them. SSO has been turned into a modeling show for horses. The prettier the horse, the more popular it is. Now, I don't actually have a problem with pretty horses, I just wish that there was something more that you could do with them. I reiterate, I don't mind them bringing in new horses, I just wish that they would bring in something that we can do with the horses, like training. Now I would like to kind of show to you how much these horses cost and kind of give you an idea of why Star Stable is focusing so heavily on horses and not anything else and not actually bringing in something new to the game. The horses in Star Stable can only be bought with Star Coins. Every month, sometimes every three weeks, they bring in either a new horse or a new skin of an existing horse. Though recently they actually brought out, I think, three new horses, one right after the other. No redesign of older horses, just three new horses, one right after the other, one of them was an exclusive. All the horses that were recently released were no less than 800 star coins, which means you can technically buy a new horse every two months. And by then they have released a new exclusive, so you can't buy it because you're already saving up for the horse that they brought out last month, and so your only option is technically to buy star coins. But it gets even better. Currently, they have about 354 horses available to buy. Let's say you want to buy one of each breed in the newest generation. Currently, there are 144 third generation horses available, dividing that by 6 because that is the average skins you get per horse and you end up with 24 horses you need to buy to complete the collection of the third generation. The prices average between 350 star coins and 975, which is the newest horse that came out. But let's be nice and say that the average price per horse is about 650 to buy one color from each breed. Times that with 22 and you get 15,600 star coins you need to buy all of these horses. Times that with 64.99, the 5,000 star coin package, and you get $193 you need to buy 24 horses only in the third generation. You don't have to, but it gives you some context in the amount of money spent on these horses. We can further say that you do get about half of the star coins if you're a star rider. I mean, you do get 100 star coins per week. So that means you'll pay about $97, 4 to $5 per horse if you save up once a month. And remember, every month a new horse is coming out. So you're always going to be a little bit behind. And this does not include the exclusives that only stay for a few weeks, pushing you just that little bit into buying some extra star coins. The Rune Runner that I mentioned previously is the only free horse that you can get in the game. And that is actually quite nice, the fact that they did give a horse game and people are so extremely grateful. Oh, thank you, Star Stable, for giving us a free horse. You are the best thing since sliced bread. Yeah, but the thing is, what you need to remember, as I said before, the Rune Runner is just a reskin of a horse you already have, so they really didn't put in a lot of effort. But they really also love their reskins, as proven by the exclusives. Many of the wild horses that are coming out are just reskins. Dorka and Solus, for example, who just came out, were just reskins of the Irish Cob. And there is going to be another reskin for the Halloween horse that is just going to be the Jorvik Wild Horse. So just another reskin for the Halloween horse. They are exactly the same in every respect. The only difference is they have different colors and they shift color when getting close to civilization. And they sell them as exclusives. They've done this with a lot of horses from the Fawn Sea to the Wood Ear and the Brinnacle, which is another reskin of the North Swedish horse, of course. These skins are actually fine. I don't have a problem with it. But it's just a little shocking that they expect you to still pay $9 for a horse that you can't really do much with. And it's a reskin to boot. To further expound upon this, if you bought, for example, a second generation thoroughbred and a third generation thoroughbred comes out, you are not allowed to just exchange the skin. You must buy the newer skin at full price. This I find to be a little egregious, especially when they have breed specific races like the Icelandic pony race. 
You cannot compete in this race unless you have an Icelandic horse. And you cannot complete the quest either. So how many new players are going to buy this horse only to have a third generation version come out and then they have to buy it again? To give some perspective on this, when WoW updated its game to newer graphics, it offered players a chance to exchange their old mounts in for the newer models. Then again, WoW actually allows players to buy mounts with in-game currency. They, they bugger up a lot, but this is actually quite nice. Well done, World of Warcraft. Have a Jorvik shilling. And selling your horse won't do you any good. You can't get any star coins if you sell it. You only get a tiny bit of Jorvik shillings, barely enough to buy one piece of gear. Just wow. But SSO won't be SSO if they can't find more ways to manipulate their player base. Star Stable Horses is a free app game where you can get exclusive colors of certain breeds. You pick one of these horses, then you can care for it as a foal, train it up to maturity. Actual interesting training, by the way, which again, I ask, why can't we have this in the actual game? And then move it to SSO, the actual Star Stable online game, for a full 850 star coins. You do see what they're doing. Making the game free means a lot of kids are going to be playing it regardless. Playing with the foal and watching it grow will build an emotional connection. And when it's ready to move over to the main game, why in the world wouldn't they do that? And they keep adding exclusive skins in the app. Just another example of where SSO's focus these days is clearly not on making a good horse game, but rather just adding horses. So at the very end here, we have to ask the question, why in the world do people still buy these horses when you can really not do much with them? I mean, it's not for the gameplay, it's not for the end game, not for the good mechanisms of training or intricate design. So why? Because we want to collect them all? We are essentially playing a far more expensive version of Pokemon. One where you have to buy every single one of the Pokemon and you can't do anything else other than just ride them around for a bit. You can't battle them, you can't train them really, you can't do anything tactical with them, they're just kind of pretty things to keep in your stable. They're essentially using the endowment effect. The second you own two of one thing, you're gonna want to buy a third and bringing in a new horse ensures that the collection will never be complete and so the players continue to buy. It's also an indirect peer pressure thing. I think if two girls, for example, are friends and one girl has 10 horses and the other has 12, the first girl might feel pressured into buying more to keep up with her friend. I mean, certain clubs in Star Stable Online actually demand that you have certain horses, which means if you don't have a horse and you want to be part of a club, you have to go buy that horse in order to be part of the club. It's kind of frustrating. It's also at the same time an emotional manipulation. And here I would like to quote Velvet from the full National Velvet. And that's it. When girls or otherwise see these beautiful, pretty horses, their hearts literally skip a beat and they instinctively want one. You build almost an instant emotional connection with the horse that you see, playing on the cute, pretty and sweet factor. For those in the audience who are more a shooty shooty bang bang type, picture the opening gameplay of Doom. Holy shit, this is amazing! It evokes an emotion, and emotions are very hard to ignore, especially when you're younger. It's your entire world. So they are creating collections, which no one can finish, making horses girls will fall for, and placing all their focus on that specifically to ensure they get more money every month without offering us good gameplay ever. Best of all, this does not include pets, gear, sleeping over, buying stables, boosting your horse's mood meter, changing its mane, or paying to train your horse a level. All of these cost star coins, so they're going to be draining your money even more. Someone give Star Stable Online a round of applause. They have managed to turn a horse game into a cash cow. So here we are at the end of all things. I like Lord of the Rings, leave me alone. The game Star Stable Online has changed its design philosophy from creating a magical world to creating horses players will buy. The charm and beauty of the game has been tainted and a little gutted by a continuous push for more horses and thus more money for Star Stable. Players don't have a lot to do in the game because the game's focus is, as I said before, not on gameplay but rather on cosmetics. A lot of the comments, I'm guessing, will revolve around the role-playing they do in-game. The game offers the ability to turn into a wild horse, for example, so players often do wild horse role-plays and other players do dressage stage on their own and role-play their own stories. But the thing is, that sort of just shows to me that there is an underlying problem in this game. 
The players have to make their own fun, because there isn't a lot to do. It's as if Star Stable Online has become a big sandbox for players to jump into and play pretend in for a little while. I really won't mind it if it was just that, but I shouldn't have to pay money to do that. If you're expecting me to pay, I expect something for my money. Now, do I think SSO is a bad game? No, I think it's a decent game with a lot of potential, but a game with bad practices. The tragedy is these horses aren't timeless, as proven by the first generation, as proven by the second generation, and as proven by the third. There will be a fourth generation, and even now, in a few weeks, a new horse will pop up, and then in a month, another, and then in another month, another, and then another. And you know what? By then, the wild Jorvik horses will be old news. And they won't be as pretty anymore, because something prettier just came along. It'll just be another horse standing in your stable with a level 15 cap and nothing else to show for it. And there is nothing else to show for it. There is nothing more you can do with it. It is standing there for no other reason than literally to look pretty. They currently have 350 horses available to buy, and they keep adding more. I feel like SSO needs to start cleaning out their closet and put some emphasis on quality, not quantity. Unless Star Stable drastically changes their philosophy from creating horses to make money to player enjoyment. This game will not get better. It will not get better. It is going to stay in this stagnant, mundane limbo where it has been for a very long time. Now, the players who do realize the game is bad will rather abandon ship for better games than remain stuck in something this mediocre. Because it's just a horse game, right? Who cares? But the thing is, I do remember a long time ago when I went out and bought Oblivion just to ride a horse and how a passion for horses turned me into a gamer. I play RPGs now, I play science fiction games, and I can't help but wonder if other players didn't have the same experience. Happy to be able to make a character or ride a horse and then end up loving the game and becoming a full-time gamer. Hell, my sister became a level 80 healer in World of Warcraft Lich King expansion because she liked the idea of playing an elf. The problem though with Star Stable Online is it's not offering anything innovative or interesting, so these players who come in with this passion aren't going to be good gamers. They're going to be players who like pretty things because that is all that Star Stable cares about. Giving things to you that you can buy turning you into a consumer and not actually a gamer. Any game can broaden someone's palette. Any game can introduce a person to gaming. The point is, it doesn't matter what draws people to your game. The point is star stable. There are certain passions that can. And you, as a game developer, need to respect that and ensure that when passionate people do end up there, that they are treated with respect and not exploited. Because a passionate person is an easy thing to exploit. Trust me, I know this. And that is exactly what you're doing. You, Star Stable, are exploiting our passions for your own gain and not giving anything back of worth to us. And I think it's high time that you sit down and give us a good game to play and not just a pretty horse to buy.